It's a busy day today, ladies and gentlemen. As you guys probably saw earlier, we also are talking about the B1 Battle Droid and the Super B2 Battle Droid rework. There's a card over in the top right-hand corner. If you want to check out that video, that, in my opinion, is the most significant news that you got to check out because we are building up to what I think is going to be a very powerful Separatist Droid army this month. I couldn't be more excited about that. But in this video that you're watching right here, we're going to talk about the Emperor's Command Shuttle. A couple days ago, they confirmed it in the road ahead blog post and we're going to talk about the kit what it has to offer for ships and i think it's going to help the empire and sith uh, sith teams a little bit more now that the millennium falcon is kind of owning things in arena with the rebels now before we get into the kit and my thoughts and all that fun stuff we got to first talk about how you are going to acquire this ship because it's a very different way of acquiring that we haven't seen quite before mainly a few days ago we saw that we're going to have this new type of event called the galactic chase where for a period of time they'll say when you farm something on a specific area of the game you have a chance to gain a blueprint slash shard of a character or a ship depending on whatever they're trying to kind of put out there for this chase and how you'll acquire this emperor's command shuttles that starting at midnight february 8th which is your local time through february 12th you will have a chance to farm all the blueprints for this ship and each energy of fleet ener or ship energy that you're using you have a four percent chance to get a blueprint that drops so in more layman terms if a particular battle uses eight energy you have a 32 percent chance of getting a blueprint if there's 10 energy required for that battle 40 percent 16 energy 64 percent and if a battle requires the highest right now which is 20 energy you have an 80 percent chance to get a blueprint so if you really want this ship you might be asking yourself all right what's the fastest way to get the command shuttle which which type of battle should i I'd be doing well someone did a little quick study over on reddit kind of playing with probabilities they did they did a hundred thousand simulations of 160 energy and then pretty much what they did is that they took the study uh comparing uh battles with eight energy 10 energy 16 energy and 20 energy and basically no matter which one you use assuming you're always using 160 energy on average you're going to be getting about six blueprints of this ship so really just farm your normal stuff that you're going after a particular set of battles isn't going to be any more beneficial than the others and another thing to keep in mind before we talk about the kit is that there's a lot of stuff planned out for this month and obviously the fastest way to get this ship all the way to seven stars is you're probably gonna have to dig into your crystal reserves so if you've been stacking up a lot of crystals whether it's for the future marquee characters the b1 and the droidica or you're still hoping that there's some sort of darth revenue event down the line keep in mind you're gonna spend a lot of crystals probably to get this ship but i'm gonna leave my thoughts at that you guys make that decision for yourself but what i will help you try to do is kind of assess whether the ship is worth kind of digging into your crystal reserve so a few quick thoughts about emperor palpatine's command shuttle first of all i think it's kind of weird that they're making it a combat ship and instead of a capital ship i couldn't really imagine emperor palpatine being in the middle of a fray of a battle that's a whole other thought but you might be asking is this going to help counter the millennium falcon i'm going to have to say no millennium falcon and uh, the home one and all the rebels they are super powerful they have a lot of stuff going on although emperor palpatine will help you try to win those battles a bit better don't expect him to completely overweigh the power the power that the millennium falcon and rebels have right now the basic ability is called aggressive offensive the final text says deal special damage to a target enemy and if they had target lock on them you inflict critical damage down on target enemy for two turns really not that much going on but the whole point about it is try to make sure that your ships are surviving a bit longer that's emperor palpatine's goal is to increase the survivability of your ships and your team the big highlight ability for emperor palpatine can be seen right here it's called emperor's influence and it has a cooldown of three and it starts on a cooldown of three because it is a bit powerful but there is a way to speed up this process we'll talk about that in a second the whole thing says dispel all debuffs from a target empire or sith ally then they recover 50 percent of their max health and protection big bonus right there and dispel all buffs on the target enemy and inflict buff immunity on all target locked enemies for two turns and this ability starts on a cooldown and cannot be evaded so a few things to unpack there first of all only empire and sith uh, synergy going on here so really your fleet is going to really want to rely on those type of ships and this kind of pairs well nicely as we know grand Admiral thrawn helps regenerate some health for your team with his special ability in his capital ship this right here will also further increase the survivability of your team and oddly enough i see this being more of a hound's tooth counter than millennium falcon counter because when you use emperor's influence you can remove the taunt off of the uh, off of the hound's tooth and inflict buff immunity to prevent it 
from taunting and you also get to cleanse over that breach that might be on one of your uh, fellow Scyther Empire allies. And also it has its other uses such as Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka Tano when called in as a reinforcement she can kind of be a deadly reinforcement with all the retribution and all the other stuff she's got going, going on but with Emperor Palpatine you can remove that retribution and quickly take care of her. So there's a couple ways to really manage these characters but really the Hound's Tooth I think is going to be uh, the one that suffers the most of Emperor Palpatine's being used a lot. The next special ability is called Royal Escort. It has a cooldown of three and after all is said and done, the final text is deal special damage to a target enemy and inflict target lock on them for two turns then. The healthiest other Empire or Sith ally taunts for two turns. So the whole point here is to kind of draw fire away from Emperor Palpatine and away from the others to go for the one with the highest health uh, go and protection. And because of this and some other stuff we're going to read into in a second, this is going to start making the B-28 bomber a lot more interesting. We haven't seen too much of the B-28 bomber in Arena, but now with Emperor Palpatine becoming into the mix and uh, seeing how he helps out Empire and Sith, we might see a lot of B-28 bombers being your dedicated taunting tank. So Emperor Palpatine is going to constantly throw a taunt over on that Sith ship to make sure that it's going to satisfy its duties. And now we have battle tested formation. And again, this is all about surviving a lot longer in the battle. So basically, Final Tech says dispel all divas on Emperor shuttle anytime it takes damage from a target locked enemy. So this is why this is why Vader is going to be important because he always makes sure that target lock never disappears on the other team. So a little bit of a indirect synergy, kind of like how Palpatine and Vader have in other aspects of the game. And then Empire and Sith allies gain protection up 20% protection up for two turns when they are critically hit. And we get to double this to 40% for Empire or Sith allies that are taunting. So again, you really want that B-20 bomber on your team, I think, because when it's taunting, every time you're getting hit you're also going to be feeding a lot of you're going to be feeding 40 percent protection up over to this the b28 bomber because he's taunting or whatever 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 other ship might be taunting for you so really emperor palpatine is really just being there to kind of help your team survive a bit longer against all those heavy critical damage attacks from the rebels and the millennium falcon again won't be a perfect thing to counter the millennium falcon but it'll help you survive a bit longer rather than being destroyed in seconds and then we have the reinforcement ability imperial entangled man this might make emperor palpatine the best reinforcement first reinforcement for an empire slash sith team you're trying to compose the whole thing says when you've upgraded all the way is that the emperor shuttle gains protection up 25 percent protection up and critical hit immunity for two turns so again try not to get blown away and the good stuff is coming up empire and sith allies gain offense up for two turns inflict tenacity down on a target enemy for two turns which can't be evaded or resisted then the Emperor Shuttle can use Emperor's Influence immediately. So I alluded to this earlier, instead of waiting for that three turn cooldown, if you left it out on the field at the very beginning, well now when you call it in right away, you can use Emperor's Influence at the very moment he reinforces. And that is pretty significant because when you think about ships, if you really care that much about ships, Houndstooth is usually a starting ship for a lot of teams out there. And by the time you call in your first reinforcement, the, the Houndstooth would have already applied Breach and will already be taunting. Well, if you recall Emperor's influence, he's going to reinforce himself, be able to use Emperor's influence right away. And when he uses it, he can remove that taunt off of the off of the uh, Hound's Tooth, apply buff immunity, and cleanse the breach off of his uh, the target ally that you choose. So this is why you might want to have the Emperor's Command Shuttle be the first thing to come in from your reinforcements to kind of undo all the crazy things that Hound's Tooth did. Because once you can get get around Hound's Tooth. It's a pretty easy battle versus being stuck behind Houndstooth the whole entire time. So that's pretty much all that there is to it. It's an interesting way of getting this ship. I don't know when the event will come back. The event is definitely trying to instill some sense of panic farming because this is the first time we've ever seen this. We don't know what the frequency is. Is it going to be once a month this happened, once every three months? We don't quite know. So although this is a pretty decent ship, I don't know if you really got to panic farm this to all the way to seven stars. This might be perfectly fine at whatever star level it unlocks it. And especially Especially if you're running the Rebels and the Millennium Falcon, I don't see the Emperor's Command Shuttle really having a, a, a perfect place in that team since you really want a Rebel-based team. But what I do see this addressing is just basically helping your Empire and Sith teams last a bit longer in battle and mainly helping you control 
the Hound's Tooth because that is one of the problems of people not running Millennium Falcon or a full Rebel team is that the Hound's Tooth is annoying and if you run mostly a Sith and Empire team, you're really going to enjoy the Emperor's Command Shuttle. But the way ships are, just like I said in previous videos, there's not a huge reason to have a ship at seven stars right away if you can't spend the money or get the crystals and all that fun stuff. But I think at five stars, four stars, whatever it might be for this ship, I think it's gonna be perfectly usable if you're trying to find that niche use that I mentioned. And that's gonna be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting ship Ship, definitely a good ship let me know what your thoughts are down below but guys you got to check out the other video the b1 battle droid is one of the most unique units i've seen and the, with the b2 super battle droid i'm thinking we're in for quite a lot of fun this month but that's gonna be it thank you so much for watching like the video if you did enjoy it comment down below and be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing because we have a lot of stuff to do this month and until the next video rework grieve us rework grieve us cg get your act together and rework grieve us rework grieve us rework Grieve us, come on CG, don't make me pray to Jesus. Rework, grieve us, rework.